Full stack is fuller than what exactly? I'm Ray Myers. Welcome to Craft vs. Cruft. Today I'd like to talk about uh, the, the term full stack as in a full stack developer, or I, I kind of believe it's short for a full stack web developer, really. And uh, in particular, some of the criticism that I've been seeing uh, floating around the LinkedIn's and the, the Twitter sphere about this term because there's, you know, occasional bits of, of backlash about it. Now, I don't want to call out anyone in specific here. I don't even know if they would agree with the, the implications uh, that I'm pulling from what they're saying, but I, I do feel that this has the potential to lead people down kind of a problematic path, and I wanted to, to, to give my take here. A, a really important thing to keep in mind, in uh, especially in arguments, is that, like, Words don't always have just one meaning, and meaning is dependent on context. So if, for instance, I say, you know, we have uh, a fully stocked pantry in the house, and someone says, oh, yeah, you know, do you have a boar's head in it? And I'm like, well, no, I don't actually have, you know, a boar's head. I, I have bread and, and flour and other things. Oh, well, it's not fully stocked if you don't have a boar's head because obviously having a boar's head is fuller than not having a boar's head. I'm like, okay, well, literally that's true, but like, you know, I was using that word in a particular context to communicate a particular thing. And so if you're just going around finding something else that it could mean just to say that uh, the, the, the term is wrong, you know, you'd be being a bit of a dickhead. Moving right along to the idea of the term uh, full stack, someone said recently, for instance, that they think people shouldn't identify as full stack developers. They should, uh, the term they proposed was to call themselves uh, aspiring application developers. So right off the bat, like there are people who will pay me to be what they're calling a full stack developer. Like there are titles out there that say that. No one is, uh, has aspiring application developer listings available. So, uh, you know, I, I can't really show up to that situation saying, well, I, I identify as an aspiring application developer. Um, I get, I get what it's trying to say though. There were legitimate points made here, which is that the, the fullness of the application stack is huge. Depending on the, the kind of application, you've got, you know, a GUI, maybe front end, back end database. But then, oh, what's in the database itself? Well, more code. And, and what, uh, what did you use to build that code? A compiler. And what's that built on, you know, assembly language maybe? And below that, you've got chips or transistors, logic gates, and, and on and on and on. I could see like saying that you know the full stack implying that in calling yourself a full stack developer does seem a little bit um, deceptive. Yeah. So in that sense, I, I don't have a boar's head in my pantry and I don't actually know how to assemble, uh, you know, an integrated circuit from molecules. Uh, however, uh, words are used in a context. Full stack developer, I think, generally is taken to mean full stack web developer. Uh, the fact that web development dominates so much of the conversation around software engineering, well, that's perhaps its own, uh, you know, issue because it is not the entire story. But we generally are talking about full stack web developer. The reason we say that is because there are front end web developers and back end web developers, and there are people who have a combination of those two skill sets. So what does that mean that a, uh, a front end developer can do? Typically, a front end web developer will uh, know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. They often will know a um, particular front end framework such as Vue or React or Angular probably will know uh, some sort of front-end testing framework like, uh, for example, Jasmine uh, for JavaScript unit testing or, or Mocha. And they might have some degree of design skill or, or design literacy uh, in either like visual design or, or, or UX design. Uh, but generally, that's, that's the family of skills they play in. Now, then what's a back-end web developer do? Uh, they, you know, usually know 
a backend language such as Java, such as Ruby, such as Python. They might know a backend web development framework such as Spring MVC in Java, such as Rails for Ruby, such as Django or Flask for Python. They hopefully know unit testing. They might have uh, several other kinds of testing tools uh, under their belt. They typically know how to query databases, at least if you're a senior backend developer, you probably can design your own table structures and so forth. So then what if, what if you're a full stack developer that is, you know, usually a, a competent combination of those front end development skills and those back end development skills that I mentioned. It doesn't mean you're fully ambidextrous, right? It doesn't mean that you are equally deep in each of these areas. Oftentimes you might hear someone say like they're a back end leaning full stack developer. That's me. And so of course, even if you're not equally skilled in each, there are just a lot of advantages to having that degree of versatility where you can still make your way uh, when you have to make the, the part of the change you're trying to make that, that, that crosses the system boundaries. Now I would contend then in a, in a practical context, when you're dealing with like, okay, do we have a uh, separate front end team and back end team? Or, you know, is this being worked on by, by a full stack team that will not have to develop, divide the work between them? This is a very useful, meaningful term. It is also not completely literal because words aren't always completely literal. In a way, the last full stack developer was Steve Wozniak, you know, before we even would have would have had the term. The Apple II was the last personal computer that came entirely out of one head, where one person almost completely designed both the hardware and the software for it. And that's an amazing feat even at the time, but systems are are far more complex now. And so I think when you're thinking about a, a task at hand, you know, you should be uh, not afraid to kind of learn more and more adjacent skills. It's going to give you a lot more freedom, but I don't really see any utility in, in saying, well, you know, don't, don't call yourself full stack if you don't know everything, which is a bar you will never meet. Another objection I sometimes hear to this term is that people feel like managers are just trying to ask them to do more work, right? Like managers just came up with the idea of like, well, let's just have full stack developers and let's give you twice as many responsibilities and, and then it'll be easier to, to manage things. And well, that doesn't sound good, right? And I, I don't want to completely dismiss it, right? Like their lived experience is not wrong, per se. You don't want to go through life telling people that their, that their experiences are, are incorrect. I don't think that they've uh, experienced, you know, maybe the, the best that the, this mentality has to offer, but there, there are concerns there to take seriously. If, um, if you have a situation where like, oh, these two teams were doing X much work and let's just give all that to work to one team now and expect the same amount of output, uh, with no really like allowances uh, for the fact that we're giving people a lot of extra responsibilities. Well, that's not, that's not fair at all. Right. And people maybe also perceive the expectation that you're supposed to be like equally good at, at twice as much stuff. There's a, a great benefit that comes from just being like, you know, passable <laughs> at some of these things. Like I'm just okay at CSS. Right. But I've, I've, uh, you know, been able to complete tasks, you know, hundreds of times that I knew enough CSS to get buy-in and then the rest of it I was able to own on my own. And so I'm going to pull in a front-end expert when I need, but I can kind of, I can kind of make my way following the conventions of the system uh, a lot of the, the time. That's, that's actually kind of liberating. This just, just really depends on whether you're in a, a healthy environment uh, where it will be expected that you need to spend some some time learning if you're going to know something. You see this kind of objection in, in DevOps uh, a lot where people think, oh, you know, they just want uh, one team to do more, more of the work. They just want to, you know, maybe devs to do ops now and, and do 
you know, more responsibilities without, without the support. Man, that's not what DevOps is about at all. That's a really unfortunate, uh, application of it. And I'm, I'm sure some people have experienced that, but no, that's, that's bad. If you're going to redraw the, the boundaries of responsibility, you know, people still need to have the appropriate support. And a full stack team is not necessarily a team of, you know, individually 100% full stack people, it's uh, it's a situation where you have all the right expertise in the room. If you don't have it, sometimes you need to help bring it in. And, uh, you know, as they work with each other, if they're collaborating closely, then uh, they're, they're going to start to rub off on each other a little bit. But but nonetheless, people are, are individuals. We want uh, individuals to be a little more autonomous. We want teams to be a little more adaptable and autonomous. But uh, do, do we want or expect people to be interchangeable? You know, that that's really unhealthy. And I think that would be a mischaracterization of, you know, f full stack or DevOps or agile or wh whatever you want to say. Uh, you know, people's uniqueness uh, and their, their own, you know, growth path that they're on absolutely needs to be respected in a healthy environment. And finally, the the pattern that really made me want to call this out is a gatekeeping. Don't call yourself a full stack developer unless with this like giant arbitrary list of goalposts. Statements of that character, of that gatekeeping character, are often just, just really destructive. You see a, a lot of people you know, going out of their way to say HTML is not a programming language lately, like just out of nowhere, like nobody says a damn thing. Hey, I woke up this morning thinking HTML was not a programming language. Uh, under some definitions, that's true. But like, why is that statement being made? The statement seems to come from a place of wanting to deprive certain people like web designers of like validity and, and professional respect. I think that's that's what's happening there. And, you know, that's not really okay. So where do we go from here? Well, as you're progressing, I encourage you to, to pick up, you know, related skills to the things you're, you're working on. As you notice barriers, pick those things up. Understand you won't be an expert in, in everything. A little can really go a long way when it comes to these complementary skill sets. So whatever you want to uh, call yourself, I think that's a much more en enriching, fulfilling approach uh, personally and professionally than boxing yourself into one label or, or, or one area. This is what I do. Anything else is not my problem. Uh, you know, go where the problems are. And always remember what Lao Tzu said in Tao Te Ching, with patience, the most tangled cord may be undone. Thank you.